Hello. We'll wait a couple of minutes or so to um, make sure everybody knows that Facebook tell everybody that we're on. Sorry for the delay. I seem to be late all the time lately, and I hate being late. I really, really do. It's not my thing, but it is what it is. Um, it's just been trying to play catch up since I came back. It's been very, very slow going. Hello. Oh, you know what? I forgot to turn this one on. Almost forgot. Let me double check and see how it's going to look. Oh. All right, we got to fix it. It's a mess. Told you I'm all discombobulated. Hold on. Not the best, but it'll do for now. Okay. Hello. It's been one of those weeks. I love going away. Problem is, I don't like coming back and having to deal with all the craziness which happens. That's not the fun part. A lovely time, not long enough, as usual. Vacations and getaways are never long enough. So we have our next two blocks. Hold on, I'm just gonna get ready because it took too long. If I did it. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, it's one of those days. Okay, so we have block 47 and 48. All right, here we go. So this is block 47. And I've put some of it together already. We've done half square triangles a number of times with the line, without the line. So I'm gonna show you this one uh, with the line and then I'll show it without the line. And the only reason I can do it without the line is because I use my Greek glide with all these wonderful lines on it to follow. So half square triangle, two fabrics right side together. You have a one diagonal line down the center. You're gonna sew a quarter of an inch on one side of the line. Then I'm gonna roll, turn it over and do a quarter of an inch on the other side of the line. And then I'm gonna cut it right on the line. And that will give me two half square triangles. There's plenty of methods out there to do half square triangles. You can do multiple half square triangles at a time, as many as eight. Um, by how you cut it and by making the uh, squares, the initial squares, much larger than you need. Um, th but there's plenty of options out there to make half square triangles. This is nothing new. We've been doing it for weeks and weeks and weeks and months now, but it bears repeating. I hope everybody had a great week so far. It's Wednesday. You know what that means? It's stitch and bitch day here. It's a free sit and sew day. We just iron these and then we'll have our block together. I still, I have almost everything unpacked, but I still have my personal stuff as far as projects 
things like that to unpack. But I actually got to visit a couple of shops on my way home, which was lovely. It's always fun as a shop owner to see what other shops are doing. And not every shop is the same. So we all have our different tastes, what we like, kind of fabric that we buy. And um, I can always get good ideas too from other shops. And as usual, I always spend more money than I should at other shops. That's just the nature of the beast. This is one of my extras, which we can use later on. And I put it in my little extra. Just like I have an extra half square triangle from this one, because you need two. Okay, so here is our row. I'm gonna do cut, so these three pieces together. So all of these three rows together and then put this one on. All right. It's been crazy. I walked into a whole lot of fabric when I came in on the on Friday. A whole lot of deliveries. Oh, we have the newest um Kimberbell blank and um New CD, which is Emma's collage, which are adorable, beautiful pillows. Um, and the newest blank is a ivory or cream or light tan, whatever you want to call it, um, pillow cover. And I have the 18 by 18 pillow inserts from Kimberbell. So I'm going to be working on one of those this week, too, so I can have it. We still have more of the Kimberbell fill in the blank for July, which is the blue pillow cover and the beautiful flowers. Here we go. And they're on the website. So now we're going to sew these three together. There's no real matching seams in this block, which is sometimes fun to just sit and sew. As you know, most of the time I sew with a scant quarter of an inch, which gives me a little bit larger block than I need. I'd rather have a larger block than um, too small because you can square it up after you're done and have the right size block. The lovely thing about this quilt is that literally um, it's got so much piecing in the background. So you can see that with no problem. All that white cream in the background is nothing but pieced blocks. So literally, if you're new, you have, it's impossible to see any mistakes or boo-boo, see? That's one square. See all the piecing and it's all in cream and such. Creams and whites, which is what I did for the background. But it's literally impossible for you to see any boo-boos. This is a great quilt for you to master the quarter inch seam and get really, really good at your seam allowance and at your um, seam alignment. So there we go. All we gotta do is sew this one onto here and put the side on and we are done with this block. Again, this one is 47. Hard to believe we're almost halfway there with all of these blocks. It doesn't take long. And I'm really looking forward to getting that quilt that I have on my long arm off so I can start having some fun with the completed quilt that I already have the quilt top and show you some quilting ideas, both with the pro stitcher and with ruler work, I love ruler work. To me, that's like the best. Okay, so all I gotta do is iron this one and put the one more piece on it, and we are good to go. On the next block, on block 48, um, I highly, highly, highly recommend only 
uh, using a scant quarter of an inch because there is a lot of small piecing. And as always, starch is your friend because without the starch on these little pieces, it might be hard to line them up. A little bit of starch will help stop your pieces from When I'm done with this block, it's not going to look pretty, but when I square it up, it'll be perfect. That's what I mean by a scant quarter of an inch. Unless you are super great at your quarter of an inch seam already, more power to you. But even then, I still recommend um, a scant quarter of an inch. It's much better to, peep, to cut it down to the appropriate size than it is, you can't put it back. It's just not going to happen. There you go, that's 47. Now we're gonna start with 48. And I've done most of it just so that I can give you an idea of get it done completely before um, my time is up. So see all of these are half square triangles, teeny, teeny, weeny half square triangles, like really teeny, okay? And now we're gonna do a half square triangle without the line. See this line right here? And I have a quarter inch foot with a guide. So I have a quarter inch line over here. This is my center line. There's a quarter inch line over here. If I put the point of the square on the quarter of an inch line and my quarter inch foot on the point of the, the angle up here and just follow that along, uh, hold on, it helps if you move it up a little bit and follow that along, I'm gonna be a quarter of an inch from the center, just as if there was a line there for me to follow. Now, does this save a ton of time? No, but every second turns into eventually one minute and one minute turns into five minutes. And all I'm gonna do is turn it around, put it right back down again, my point is right on this quarter of an inch line. Oops, it helps if it's, the needle is threaded. So every little thing that I do is meant to save me a little bit of time here and there. Okay, there you go. And then all you gotta do is cut it down the center. And iron the seams. I have this week a, a uh, Kimberbell blank video because I was away last week. So I'll be posting a time when I can do that one this week. It's just been crazy. You do mean crazy. It's been absolutely nuts. So this one goes here, and this one goes there. And now we're going to sew the two half square triangles together. Beautiful thing about this quilt, it can be a little bit off and nobody's going to notice it. The only time anybody will notice it is when it comes to the colors. So when I'm putting this part, this row onto, so when it's this row, I'm going to make sure that this color lines up with this color. That's the only time 
you're going to see anything. I'm just going to sew this little piece together. I'm finishing up this little row and then I'll sew it to the bigger piece. Oh, I don't like how that came out. Oops. All right. Got to redo that real quick. Just a second. I don't like how that was sewn. See? Nobody is perfect, including me. I do my fair share of mistakes. Morning, Suzanne. I really, 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 really want to work on the quilting on this so bad. Can't wait. And it's going to be completely ad lib. And then I get to show you a few ideas for quilting, which I'm looking forward to. All right, let's try that one more time. Because I did my little squares, you could square the little squares up after you're done sewing them with a, with a scant quarter of an inch seam. Um, but as you'll see, notice, I don't worry about it. I'll show you why. It's really not going to make a difference. I don't show, I mean, I don't believe in quote police either. So nothing I do is quote unquote the quote police way. It's not exactly how you do it, but it gets you to the same place without any of the scrutiny and the aggravation of trying to make everything perfect. Done is better than perfect, no matter what anybody says. As long as you're happy with what you've done, that's all that matters. All right, back to our block. So as you can see, my half square triangles are slightly bigger than the piece that I cut for the bottom. And I'm okay with that. All I'm going to do is just center it into in the half square triangles and sew them together. These are so tiny, and in the big scheme of things, when you look at this world, nobody's going to notice it. Honest to God, nobody's going to see it. As long as the colors line up, that's all that matters. Now, so my little trick. Now, is this the perfect way of doing it? No, but that's okay. I'm all right with it. On this side, right here, where it's going to connect to the block, all I'm going to do is trim up that extra on the half square triangle, just a little bit. We're talking less than an eighth of or an eighth of an inch, if that. Just so that I can have a straight edge to sew with. Trust me. Nobody is going to notice that. And do my half square triangles look like they're off? No. Simple, simple. Now, we do have some blocks that are going to line up here. I'm going to try and match up the line, the seams. Um, because of that, I'm going to use pins. Because I desperately want the, the colored fabric, colored block, part of the blocks to line up. If they don't line up, that's when you're going to notice there's something wrong. As long as they line up, the rest of it is going to be easy. I hope that makes sense. Nobody's going to see anything else as long as the colored part of the blocks line up. 
Now, just a refresher again. As long as, yeah, they're going to line up nicely. Um, I put my pins on an angle because I'm sewing this way. So what that does is it means I can stop with my needle down in the seam before I take my pin out. Because there are times where the action of taking the pin out will put your seam, throw your seam off. So you spend all that time trying to make sure the seam lines up. At the end, it won't if you pull the pin out too fast or too rough. Got to keep my seams as neat as possible, especially when you have a lot of seams like this in a small block. It really will help with your quilting later on if you have some neat seams. And that's one of the reasons, there are, there are three great reasons to do this quilt if you're new. To help man, uh, master your quarter inch seam. To help master your seam alignment. Oh my goodness, not to say I'm perfect, but I like it. There you go. See how this is nice and lined up? That's all that's gonna matter. So back to it. Mastering your quarter inch seam allowance, mastering aligning your seams and keeping your seams neat. This is a wonderful quote for it. You're only doing two blocks a week. And it's all roughly the same kind of designs. So this that's why I love this quilt for a beginner. Here you go. Okay. That is block 48. Unless anybody has any questions, I gotta start my day. Today is stitching which day. Did I tell you? It is. And we've got some new fabric lines coming in and some more mixology, herring bo herringbone from mixology. And we've got some Christmas and blenders from Patrick Lowe's. And I will be posting those on Facebook later on today. I'm working on the newsletter and the calendar for classes next week, next month. So I'm doing that this week. They'll be out this week. Um, we've got a great excuse me, new bag class starting, I think August 12th. And of course I forgot to bring the bag with me, but I'll post pictures on the Facebook page. All right, everybody, I hope you have a great day and you know where I am if you need me. Bye.